We return to the hideout, and all of us take seats around the dining table as we report on the day's happenings. So, to summarize what everyone has said, we're able to communicate with the people wearing masks. And... They seem to have actual personalities. Each of our exploration teams came into contact with people from outside our group, so we conclude that there are definitely other people in the manor. I mean, I thought we knew that, but okay. So... Would we have met different people, depending on the guy, with different stories to tell before they went, Rah! That's interesting. The real problems, whether they're normal humans or not. It is rather mysterious that they all wear masks. They have a strange atmosphere about them. They'd get attacked by the monsters if they were in the halls all the time. Where do they stay? They're locked in here like us. Maybe they're living in one of the other rooms. Either way, there's no denying that they're a shady bunch. We should avoid them as best we can. No harm in being extra cautious. Hmm. I wonder. The masks do bother me, but I can't really bring myself to be suspicious of the people wearing them. If the man in the fox mask that we met that first day is still in the manor somewhere, I want to find him and talk to him. Girl, same, though. So, what do we do with the shards? We've got a bunch of them. I guess just do what we did last time? Oh. Yamato's voice brings my drifting mind back to reality. That's right, the shards! We did like the master said and gathered them up. They lie on the table on top of a silk cloth. As if rejoicing at being the subject of our conversation, they spark even more radiantly. Let's just dump them all into the thing for now, just like we did with the last one. Yo, be a little more careful! What's this? Roughneck Yamato wants us to be more careful? Huh. Karasaba smirks as he approaches the kaleidoscope mounted on the sofa table, glass shards in hand. Hey, wait! Now, now, Yamato, just calm down. Karasaba won't do anything unreasonable. Yeah, we all want to get out of here. Imagine if he just, like, smashed them all into smithereens and was like, Haha! I was the mastermind all along! <laughs> that would be like, whoa, the plot twist! Alright, looks like we're all here. Karasaba, go for it. Roger that, Captain. After checking to make sure everyone is present, Karasaba slides the shards in his hand onto the cap of the kaleidoscope. And then... Wow! Just as it did before, the cap's surface ripples like water as it slowly swallows up the glass shards. It's so beautiful. The moment the shards disappear, the kaleidoscope projects a vivid world of light onto the nearby wall. Huh. It looks just a tiny bit different than the pattern before. Did adding more fragments to it change something? Is this what the master of the manor wants? Hmm. My mind races as I gaze vaguely at the wondrous spectacle before us. How many more fragments do we have to get before we can leave? That's the real question. It seems to be over, yes? Yeah. Does that pattern have some kind of special meaning? Beats me. The afterimage of the beautiful display of light seems to be imprinted on the back of my eyelids. Standing stock still, only half aware of myself, I'm suddenly shaken from my reverie by something passing before my eyes. Huh? A white butterfly? They usually stay in the corners of the room. Why is it flying around? I follow its path with my eyes, stopping when I spot a thin hand reaching out from a narrow gap in the open door. <laughs> Who's there? Hmm? You! Oh, hi! How's it going, cutie? Uh, um, I... When I look more closely, I realize that the hand belongs to Usagi, the girl we ran into a few days ago in the storage room. Usagi, what are you doing here? Huh? 
You're the girl they were talking about! Where'd you come from? Cool it, Yamato. Yamato is about to dive towards the door, but he is stopped by Hakage, who grabs him by the arm. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I was planning to put this in here and go back, but, um... Usagi motions to a cart in the hallway, stacked high with trays of food as she stutters, trying to find the right words. This is our next reward. Oh, that smells so good. It's miso. Did you bring that for us? Aw, oh, she's so scared. Usagi's okay. It's your meal. She bows and enters the room. She walks with shaky, uncertain steps, carrying a wobbly, swaying stack of trays toward the table. Whoa, that's dangerous! I'll give you a hand! It's okay! Your arms are shaking! You're totally not okay! I move to help her, but by the time I do, everyone is already gathered around the dining table. Usagi places a tray in front of each seat, then lets out a sigh of relief. Oh, I'm not sure if you'll like any of this, but please, help yourselves. Help ourselves, you say? It's a gift from the Master for collecting the fragments. I've secretly been bringing you food and stuff this whole time, but since it wasn't really what you'd call part of a balanced diet... Huh? You expect us to eat this? Pass. You could have drugged it or something. The, the Master would never do something like that! He needs your help to complete the kaleidoscope! Hmm. Usagi. Fighting all alone. That phrase crosses my mind. Why does Usagi do what the Master says? What kind of relationship do they have? Perhaps we've all lost our nerve after confronting such a young girl, but none of us say anything else. A long silence ensues. Huh? I hear the sound of a chair pulling out and someone sitting down at the table, so I turn to look. So it's the traditional one soup five dishes style, huh? I haven't had real Japanese food since before I came here. Yamato? Everyone stares at him wide-eyed as he sits to work on the meal in front of him. Man, I know we haven't had dinner yet, but how can you just stuff your face with such suspicious food? Are... you okay, Yamato? Yup. Fine. It's just regular Japanese food. He pops a boiled potato into his mouth, swallows it, then sticks out his tongue. It's like the kid says. If the big boss man or whoever wanted us to bite the big one, he would have made it happen a long time ago. The guy wouldn't send people here and do it in such a roundabout way. He might be right. Huh. He's a simpleton, but he's actually talking sense. It just might rain tomorrow. Boy, it rains every night. Thank you, Kaguya. <laughs> Excuse me? Doesn't it rain all the time here? Uh, I don't really have any objections to what he's saying. He gave us something pertaining to our memories as a reward last time, too. He's telling us that if we continue collecting the shards like it said in the message, he'll reward us. That about right, Usagi. Y yes I think. Usagi's shoulders give a little jolt of surprise before she replies in a small voice. A reward? Does that mean we can really assume we'll be set free when we finally do complete the kaleidoscope? Well then, I suppose we may as well dig in. Benayuri, would you help me prepare some tea? Oh, sure. Aww. Cute. Let's take a look at that. Well, why do I get the feeling everything's gonna go bad all of a sudden? <laughs> Things are going too well right now. Like, mmm, suspicious. 
When I reach the table, the welcoming scent of home cooking wafts into the air from each of the bowls arranged on it. The smell makes me so hungry. Hot rice, pickled greens, miso soup steaming with the scent of the sea, baked white fish wrapped in foil, seasonal stewed vegetables, cucumber salad. They are beautifully plated and I feel giddy just looking at all of it. Everything is so immaculately cut and decorated. Oh, look at this carrot. It's cut into the shape of a flower. It really is. And this daikon sliced into a ribbon? It's almost a shame to eat it. I know what you mean. We enjoy some pleasant conversation over dinner. Though as always, tempers are flaring with certain members of the group. Who the hell eats like that? You're not supposed to do it that way. Did they not teach you how to eat when you were a kid? I don't remember when I was a kid, so how am I supposed to answer you, idiot? And it's you who needs to stop stuffing your face. It's not an eating contest. You're shoveling it into your mouth like a dog. How about you try tasting it? Who are you to tell me what to do? You're the one who started it. Come on, you two. Don't fight over dinner. Hakage, could you say something, please? No. <laughs> uh-huh. Hakage? Hakage ignores the fuss going on before him and quietly continues to eat, working his chopsticks with an utter lack of concern on his face. Trying to play referee when those two get into it is a pain. Just leave them alone and they'll wear themselves out eventually. It kind of seems like it's getting worse, though. No, have a look. Hmm? Damn it, screw this! Huh. That's my line! Huh. See? All better. It's best to just stay out of it. All better? I think it just couldn't get any worse. Hakage continues to eat, handling his chopsticks beautifully. Such elegance, such grace. As I look at him, I notice something. You don't like shiitake mushrooms, Akage? <laughs> You've been avoiding them this whole time. <laughs> oh, he blushed! I guess I was right. It's not that I don't like them. I just can't tolerate their existence. I will never accept that rubbery, squishy texture. <laughs> so it's worse than just purely not liking them. That's what people say when they don't like something. You shouldn't be picky with food, though. It's rude to the person who made it for you. Ugh, oh, fine. I'll eat it. What about you, Benny Yuri? You've got quite a little sea of green peas left on your own plate. You don't like peas either? Girl. We just have so much in common, you and I. Ugh, I'm caught. You're a proper lady, so of course you'll eat every last one, won't you? Y yeah Of course I will. Uh, I'm no match for Kagiha. Eating peas. They're so squishy and mushy and... Blech. We all chat animatedly as we enjoy our meal. Wait a minute, what happened to Usagi? I was wondering if she was just like, well, my job is done, time to go. I look around for the one responsible for our relaxing evening. Oh, she's still here, good. Huh? She's been standing in front of the door this whole time? Usagi, are you not going to eat with us? As I walk over to her, she stands motionless like a doll. She gives a little twitch when I call out to her. I... I am only here on an errand for the master. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to eat with you. But doesn't looking at all this nice food make you hungry? No, I'm okay. Don't mind me, please. Aww. Yeah! That was your stomach growling, wasn't it? I knew it. I, I'm sorry! Please, don't worry about me! Honestly! Her voice cracks as she apologizes. I can tell how embarrassed she is, even with the mask obscuring her face. I've got it. There was something in that basket she brought that would be perfect for this. Usagi, hang on a second. 
Okay. I rush into the kitchen and rummage through the baskets. I find what I'm looking for and carefully wash and slice it before setting it on a small plate and returning to the others. Here you are. Um, what's this? It's one of the apples you brought for us the other day. It's really juicy and delicious. Give it a try. Um, thank you. Taking the plate into her hand, she lifts her mask up a little bit. Oh! Oh! What a cutie! Look at her! Okay, so it's not our sister. I was wondering, I'm like, did you cut the apples into rabbit slices for the rabbit? <laughs> so cute! Okay, so that's what our, our little cutie looks like. Great. Hum. She takes a slice of apple and, with mighty effort, stuffs it into her mouth. Her mouth is so tiny that it accentuates her big, beautiful eyes. Her face is childish, her skin smooth and pale. Her appearance calls to mind a fairy tale princess who could only be described as utterly charming. This is the first time I've seen her face! She's incredibly pretty! Benny Yuri! Don't get so close to her. Uh... The instant Hakage approaches, Usagi hurriedly curries up, uh, covers up her face again. I told you before, you need to be more suspicious of strangers. S sorry but she's not a stranger. She's just a little girl who worked really hard to bring us this food. You let someone's appearance deceive you before and ended up getting chased around by a monster. Have you not learned anything? Hey, stop, Hikage! He yanks my arm and forces me back to the table. Rude. I sit down and he stares daggers at me. My body stiffens, paralyzed on the spot. Okay, that was a little... much, I think. I'm glad he's so worried about me, but he's so stubborn! Thank you for the apple, Benny Yuri. Huh? I whirl my head around behind me at the sound of her voice, but... Usagi? The girl who stood there earlier has vanished. The only trace of her presence is the empty plate. Well, at least we were able to feed her. The feast filled not only our empty stomachs, but our hearts as well. Thanks to the meal, I feel as though my fatigued body has regained its earlier vitality. My mind refreshed, my thoughts wander to the girl who brought us the feast and her master. We have no idea what their true intentions are. However, what we do know is that we have to complete the kaleidoscope. That is our one and only mission, the fate thrust upon those of us who awakened here in this manner. We have our concerns, and we have our fears. But where we were once lost at sea, we now see the glow of a lighthouse in the distance, giving us a small sliver of hope for the future. Will we make it back to shore? Will we be reunited with our families? Tune in next week for the next episode! <laughs> Those are the thoughts that are woven into my dreams as yet another day ends. Nah, don't worry guys, I wouldn't- I wouldn't do a cliffhanger like that! Right? Doesn't sound like something I would do, right? Clearing six short episodes will allow you to proceed to the next. Yes. Okay. All right, there's new. Okay. Yamato's episode? Interesting. So there's like seven? And then Yamato. Hikage, Karasuba. Takage, Kagiha, Yamato. Yamato's got quite a bit. Okay. So that's what we've... I guess we'll do daily? Oh, also, you probably noticed that I've got a lot of points. <laughs> so, funny story. I... There is a minigame um, tab you can go to on the main menu to play the minigame and get points to unlock these episodes, and I'm like, that's it. I'm gonna figure out how this stupid minigame works. And with enough practice, 
I finally got to a level A. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> I haven't got to an S rank yet, but I finally figured out how to play it somewhat properly. So the key is you need to hold down the left mouse button and drag it over the butterflies and, and like kind of wiggle a bit and then it'll lock onto them and then you can hit K to shoot them and get more points that way. Instead of clicking on it and it not taking. So there you go. There's my little tip for the day. That's how come I got so many points. So we're going to be able to go through these episodes no problem. I think... Yeah, there's nothing... Yeah. It's just this. I think we'll just do the dailies until we can't anymore. And uh, we'll go from there. Cooking with everyone. Sure, we just ate. Let's do some cooking. <laughs> After taking up residence in the hideout, a number of problems have been solved. One of them was the issue of food. Although there are no modern appliances like a microwave oven or a rice cooker, there are enough raw ingredients for us to make anything we like. Gathering and eating food together provides us with some welcome stability in the face of our continued struggles with the monsters. Man, I'm starved! Karasaba speaks to no one in particular as he lounges on the sofa. You just ate. You're seriously still hungry. Thank you, Yamato. Eh, not exactly. I haven't had much of an appetite ever since we got stuck here, but now it feels like my body's trying to make up for it. Can't get enough, no matter how much I eat. I go through stages like that too, where I'm just like, nothing appeals to me, it's a struggle to kind of eat anything, and then the next few days after that I'm just like, I cannot be satisfied no matter how much food I'm eating. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I feel you, Karasaba. <laughs> I can appreciate that. I'm pretty hungry right now, too. Right? I knew you'd understand, Benny Yuri. Karasaba pops up off the sofa and holds my hand tightly. Okay? Oh! Hey, don't go touching people without permission. Thank you, Yamato. What are you all upset about? Are you jealous? No, you dumbass. I'm upset because you're getting all touchy-feely with some chick you just met. Ah, so it is jealous. You wish you were being all touchy-feel with Benny Yuri. Shut your face. Maybe I ought to tape your mouth shut. What's with all the noise? Hikage and Kagiha approach at the sound of the commotion. Stop fighting, you two. We're all in this together, so we should really try to get along. I didn't do a thing. It was all Yamato. You never learn, do you? Come here! I'm gonna shut your mouth for you! Stop fighting already! The two of them finally stop at the sound of my raised voice. Um... Oh! Maybe we're all a little irritable because we're hungry. What's this all business? It was just those two making fools out of themselves. I mean, maybe. But I'm hungry, too. Come to think of it, talking about food makes me feel hungry, too. What an odd feeling. Uh, you can count me in amongst the group now, too. Now All this talk about food is making me hungry. <laughs> I'll go and make us something. Any requests? Oh, yes! Curry, please! That's not a bad idea. If we make a lot of curry, it should keep well. I'll give you a hand. Hey, thank you. I'll give a hand too. I'll do anything to eat Benny Yuri's homemade curry. Well, then the three of us can... Hold it. Do you even know how to make curry? <laughs> I take it you're the expert chef amongst us. It's curry. How hard can it be? How hard can it be? Look. I don't want you half-assing this and ruining it. Huh? You're going to eat too? Didn't you say you weren't hungry? Either that or he really enjoys his curry. What's that got to do with anything? I just can't trust you people to handle it yourselves. Or you just want to hang around Benny Yuri. 
I ain't you, pal. I don't just sit around thinking about girls all day. Oh, stop fighting! And what about you, Hakage? Would you like to join us? Hakage frowns, a thoughtful look on his face. Um, is something bothering you? No, I just... We have a lot of supplies and ingredients now, but I'm not so sure we should just use up all the food without a careful plan. Oh, that's a good point. On the other hand, Kaguya's right that making a large amount of it now could be a more efficient use of our supplies in the long run. I'll help you too. Wait, so you're going to help? <laughs> Pose. Were you not listening? Curry is meant to be shared. Me not helping isn't an option in our current situation. And besides, acting alone is risky. It's always safer to do things in a group. Always an excuse with you. Just admit that it sounds like fun and you want to join. I don't think I could have made my intentions any clearer than I already have. You're a big old ball of fun, aren't you? <laughs> Hakage is a very dependable guy, but he can also be a little bit difficult at times. To the kitchen, then! Away! We all make our way to the kitchen and start getting together what we need to make the curry. Hmm. We've got veggies and dried meat, but no curry roux. What?! You mean we can't have curry?! Um... There's no curry powder, either. What do you think we should do? Maybe I can make something else. Yes, let's just make do with what we have. Yamato, is that alright with you? What are you asking me for? I don't care, so long as it's edible. And I'm sure I'll love anything Benny Yuri makes. Well, we could make a stew with what we have. Oh, we need some soy sauce, though. Stew! Sounds like home cooking to me! Hustling and bustling through the kitchen, we make our preparations to start cooking. Wait! Hakage grabs the attention of everyone in the kitchen. What now? You can make curry with a mix of spices. I was going to say, if you don't have the powder or the roux, can't, do we have just the separate spices? Because you can just mix it yourself. But I was expecting Yamato to be the one to recommend that, not Hakage. I knew that. But with which spices? How am I supposed to know? But it looks like it's written down here. Hikage takes a memo off of the spice rack. That's convenient. Huh? Did you write that, Hikage? No. It was between some bottles. I just happened to see it. Perhaps the master of the manor left it here for us. No idea. But in any case, it has a recipe for vegetable curry on it. Seems like you can mix the different spices here to make curry. Hikage points at the spice rack. There are lots of bottles on the rack whose labels have words I've never seen before. I don't know what any of this is! Also, fun fact, curry as a word just means mixture of spices. Literally. So if you mix, you know, basically more than two spices, you've got a curry. <laughs> So there's no wrong way to make curry. It's all up to taste. Cumin, turmeric, cardamom, coriander, ginger, red pepper. I've never heard of any of these. What the hell is a red pepper? So we just need to mix them like the recipe says. We've got spoons, so we can just measure it and mix it ourselves. How hard could it be? What's this? Yamato's actually making sense? You wanted curry that badly. You're the one who wanted it the most. Do you actually enjoy cooking, Yamato? No, not exactly. But I feel like I remember how. Again with the, I feel like I remember this, and I feel like I remember that. Hikage strokes his chin and nods. Um. Oh. Okay. L, um, apparently also makes the text box disappear. I press that by accident instead of K. Okay, good to know. 
I see. It looks like we'll be able to do this after all. And we'll leave the mixing to Hakage. Why me? You seem like you're pretty good with the delicate stuff. I agree. I'd be reassured if Hakage handled it. Very well. The rest of you follow the instructions on the paper for the rest of the recipe. Hakage hands us the recipe, but it quickly becomes clear that there are a great deal more steps than just mixing the curry spice. This recipe is intense! No kidding. They want us to use canned tomatoes in this? Seems a little overly elaborate. I'll be happy so long as we get to have curry in the end. I don't care either way, so long as it's edible. For now, let's split the tasks up among ourselves. Kagiha guides us over to the sink. Alright. Each of us takes a look at the recipe that Hakage found. We follow the instructions to the letter, and before long we're well on our way to making curry. Hooray! Uh. Cutting vegetables, Yamato grumbles. I look up from the ginger I'm grating. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. He turns away. Something seems wrong. Did you cut your hand? What? Are you okay? Let me see. Hey, don't touch! Yamato pulls his hand away from me and I see large tears forming in his eyes. Oh, sweet baby. Did it hurt that badly? No. I, uh, I just got some onion in my eyes. Huh? Leave the big burly man alone, Beniuri. Let him be alone with his itty bitty cut. <laughs> As he rinses off a bowl full of rice, Karasava sighs. Huh. Can it? The onions are making me tear up. Yamato rubs his eyes with the back of his hand. Wow, you look so dumb. And you're getting mad at us? That's enough, Karasava. Sorry if I was mistaken, Yamato. I know you re can't really help whether or not you tear up when you chop onions. <laughs> How is that supposed to make me feel better? And what's the deal with you? Um, I was grating some garlic and ginger. Next we need to fry the onions, garlic, and ginger together in a pan. Let me go and get one. Thanks, Kagiha. Here, I'm done cutting. Hikage, where are we at on the spices? Be quiet. Don't talk to me right now. <laughs> it's a very delicate process of measuring the spices. Hikage shoots an icy, sharp glare at Yamato. What the hell, man? What are you all bent out of shape about? I'm concentrating on getting these measures right. You don't need to be so exact with it. Even if you add a little more or a little less, it's not going to change the taste all that much. For real. Oh my, he is very upset about this. Small acts of carelessness eventually grow into massive failures. Be quiet and let me work in peace. Everyone just slowly smiles and backs away. That was amazing. We all stare at Hakage in silence. He's quite the perfectionist. Either that, or he's just awfully high-strung. Or he's a high-strung perfectionist. I didn't know that. Well, it's on brand. <laughs> and it's done! I turn off the stove and turn to the others. Sweet! Huzzah! It's Benny Curry time! In spite of the tension between them, Yamato and Karaspa look at one another and laugh. Aww, see they are friends. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as they realize it, they fall into an awkward silence and turn away. Not that I like you though, bro. It smells good. Indeed. I just want to eat it all right away. Ah, oh, great, the rice is done now too. Kageha opens the pot lid and the delicious smell of fresh steamed rice fills the room. Oh man, that would be so nice to have. Oh, that smells so good! I've got a rather delicious feeling about this. Grab a plate and eat up, everyone! Yes, please! 
Out of the way! Me first! Hey! We don't have that much meat in there! Don't take so much! Calm down, you two. We're not going to run out that quickly. Oh, you're all a bunch of children. <laughs> it's very like them, though. They must be close. Like oh, hell we no. are! The two of them say it in unison. Maybe they really do get along. Mm-hmm. We all know it. I can't eat another bite. You're gonna get fat if you stuff your face like that all the time. Worry about your own face. You ate like three whole plates. Regardless, that was quite delicious. Thank you for cooking it all, Beniuri. It was a team effort, dude. Yes, it was very good. <laughs> That's just because all of us pitched in to help. If you hadn't found that note, we never would have been able to make it, Hakage. I didn't expect Hakage to be so particular when it came to putting a bunch of spices in a bowl. Kurosawa glances over at Hakage, who stands with his arms folded and apathetic expression on his face. If you aren't particular about details, your endeavors will end in failure. Cooking is no different. I don't know if you have to be that particular. <laughs> But the curry turned out great because of it. Aw, you're gonna throw salty old Hakage a lifeline? You're too nice, Beniuri. I'm so moved. He covers his eyes and pretends to cry. In that case, how about you move over here and help me clean up, Karasaba? Ayy! That was, that was such a good line! I'm so moved. Oh yeah? Well, then how about you move on over here to do the dishes? But of course! And Yamato can help too! What? Why? You eat, you clean. That's the way things work. It'll go by much faster if we all help out. Thanks, boys. Without any clue as to how we could escape the manor, everybody was a little bit edgy. But thanks to our curry-making adventures, everyone was able to relax a little bit. It started on a whim, but it ended up allowing us all to let our guard down a little bit. Nice. We grew closer.